Welcome back to Auto Chip Electronic, guys. So today, this DIY video is going to be on the new Toyota Hilux. This is for anything with this style screen, which is 2020 onwards, and it will fit every single version of the Hilux. It will include the SR, the Workmate, SR5, Rugged, Rogue, whatever variant that you have. If it has this style radio, it doesn't matter if the buttons change, it's just these year model onwards. Uh, we're gonna show you how to do the installation. It's plug and play with the Auto Chip multi-camera kit and this will allow you to turn on your reverse camera anytime, as well as add up to three additional cameras. So, we're gonna jump straight into the installation. Let's go. Okay, so you're only gonna need a couple of tools to do this vehicle, guys. Again, the non-marring pry bars that we sell on our website, a 10 millimeter socket, uh, socket screwdriver, and also a little Phillips head stumpy screwdriver. We do sell these as a complete kit if you wanna buy all three, or we do sell them individually as well. So your first step to doing this vehicle is you're gonna remove this top trim plate, this plate across the top here, and then we're gonna remove the glove box. Easiest way is just to use one of their pry bars, put it under the plastic trim, and insert it along the dash. Really easy to pull up. Okay, once you get it to the end here, you can't actually lift it out without removing the little screw that's up in the center, up in here. And this is a little scrivet, okay? So it's a little Phillips head screw and you're just gonna turn it anti-clockwise. And you wanna do this really lightly. You don't want to be putting any pressure on it and just turn it anti-clockwise because the least amount of pressure actually pulls it out. So once you actually remove it, it will look like this. I'll pull it out here, let's have a look, I'll show you. And what it looks like is just a little screw like this. It's his little centerpiece. Once you actually remove that, you'll then be able to pull this cover off and there's a little part that is actually still inserted in here that you have to be careful not to drop. So just again, use your pry bars and pull it forward. And as you pull it forward, you'll be able to see the centerpiece. So this is the little centerpiece that you're gonna pull out. Okay, very easy to do. Once that's done, you've got a lot of loose space here from that paneling and you'll be able to continue to pull the top panel off because it's just sitting behind that, okay? Put it up on your dash, make sure you don't scratch anything. Very easy to remove. From there, we're gonna remove the bottom air conditioning panel here, but we're also gonna remove this glove box up here on the left, and this is very easy to do as well. Open it up, and you can actually just pull on it. There you go, very easy to do. It is just held in by some little locking tabs, and then we're gonna put that outside the vehicle so I don't scratch it, um, or in the passenger kick panel at the moment, it's probably the easiest way. Next step, the bottom paneling underneath the actual stereo, you can actually just put your hand in and pull it out and it will pop off. It is a little bit tight, you can use the pry bar as mentioned if you want to do that. Another thing to do is if you have a rag, um, put it under these panels so you don't scratch anything. If you're worried about it, put it underneath just so it doesn't scratch anything on the dash. From there, we're actually gonna remove the 10 millimeter bolts, there is actually four of them. So there's one in here, one located in here. There's one on the left-hand side and directly underneath them, underneath the stereo, there is another two as well. Um, so you'll see one here, one over here. And we're just gonna use the 10 millimeter socket. Anti-clockwise, we'll undo them. Just ensure that you don't drop them into the dash, okay? If you're gonna remove them, just be careful and pull them out like that, and there's four of them. To Once do. you remo remove those uh, four bolts, you're just gonna hold the stereo top and bottom and pull towards you, and this will actually pop the clips off as well, and you can move it forward. Now, it will be a little bit tight because on the left-hand side, there is this passenger airbag. This is only on the SR, SR5s and above, not on the Workmate, but it has a little locking tab that you just undo it. Now, I'm gonna show you in a sec. There we go. So, as you can see here, and hold it up, little locking tab on the top of it. Just there, you're just gonna press that down and pull it out and that will allow you to remove the stereo a lot more. So there we go, it should come all the way out. Now on the back of the radio, we're just gonna undo the bottom two plugs. They're the ones that we're gonna T-piece into, which is the main power plug. Again, little locking tab on the top and then the one next to it as well. And that's where we're gonna put our T-harness for the Audio Chimp uh, multi-camera kit. This is how the kit's gonna come. The harnesses or the T-harness is actually gonna come 
in a little bag like this with the part number. It's all this model harness is for all Toyotas 2020 onwards with this style plug at the rear of the radio. And the way it's going to come, nicely neatly packaged like this, all loomed up, ready to go. And it's also going to come with a switch that is relevant for the particular vehicle. So you can mount that in the factory blank locations. And this is perfectly suited for the Toyota. Very easy to do. So we're just going to undo the harness. And the harness you cannot get wrong. It is so easy. It's literally going to T-piece into these plugs that you just undone. They will only go into one location. You actually cannot get them wrong. They will not plug into the wrong ones. Two plugs in, and then we're gonna take the other side of the plugs, put them back into the back of the radio. And that is all we need to do at the back of the radio. From there, you're gonna actually get the multi-camera module. So this is the multi-camera module here. It's gonna come nicely packaged in its own little kit. I'll remove that. It's going to come with some double-sided tape as well, but the harness is just going to plug into here. Very easy to do. Red for red, black for black, and the Molex connector here. You cannot get that wrong. That is on the T-harness that we provided for this specific vehicle. And there you go. Color for color. Very easy to do. From there, if you have any universal cameras, you can then plug them into this spot here. Camera 2, camera 3, camera 4. You can run up to three additional cameras on top of the factory reverse camera. What you're gonna have left over out of the T-harness is these two plugs. These are about a meter long, so you can mount them anywhere in the car that has the factory blanks. So you will then take your switch that you've got in the kit, camera one and two. The harness kit will say switch one and two or switch three and four. You can't go wrong. You're gonna plug them in. They're, again, they'll only go in one way and that will plug in. So you want to mount that in the factory locations. I'll show you how to pull the blanks out in just a moment. But if you want the option for the three and four, you're just going to get the additional camera three and four switch and you would plug that into there. And that's going to be all your cameras in one section. So these camera inputs are a traditional video signal input. These are RCA outputs. That is traditional for all universal aftermarket cameras that you'll get. But some cameras out there, you will find that they have a heavy duty camera plug on them, which is a four pin plug. Now, we actually sell an option for this. This is what you're gonna have to get if you do have that style of camera. So traditionally on caravans and heavy duty trailers, they will already come with a camera, which will have this style of plug, okay? So what you wanna do is get this adapter from us. It's called a four pin to RCA adapter and it will take it from that heavy duty camera to an RCA so that you can still use our multi-camera kit, okay? Those are adapters are available on our website, autochimpelectronics.com. Um, very easy, universal style as well. If you've done all your wiring, you can tape that up a little bit neater. We do offer a test of tape available on the website also, but all you're gonna do is tuck the module away, and if you have the switching, you want to route that behind your dash to wherever you want it to come out. We're going to run this down the bottom here, at the bottom of the stereo, and then we're going to put the stereo back in. So you just want to place it straight back in, and it will clip into the right section. When you're returning this, be sure to plug in the passenger airbag as you put it back in, and make sure it's all clipped in correctly. So what we're going to do, we're going to quickly show you how to pull these blanks out and mount this switch. All you're gonna do is put your hand behind the blank that you're gonna pull out, and you can actually use the non-mowing pry bars to give it a bit of leverage. And you're just gonna pull and push at the same time so that you can get it out. It is a little bit tight, so you are gonna to have to use some force, but there you go, that will pop it out. And then from there, you're gonna take the harness that you have and route it from the back through the front. And we will tuck that all the way at the end, but we're just gonna show you quickly in this video and plug it in, and then that will slot back in, nice and neat into those factory locations, and there you have it, and that is how the switch is gonna sit. And that will turn on the factory camera, and that will turn on the secondary camera, and if you wanted, you could put camera three and four here, if you'd like. And just to show you how it works, guys, you're gonna push camera one, that will turn on the factory reverse camera. If you don't already have a reverse camera, we do sell a reverse camera kit that is plug and play for this model Hilux as well. You can get it. And camera two is just gonna show a secondary camera. 
Now, we don't have a secondary camera hooked up here, but it would display here. And again, if you had camera three and four, it would show you the second and third and fourth camera as well. But this is great for anyone out there wanting to tow. You can check behind you while you're driving, check your hitch up, your trailer, mount a front camera, whatever you like. The other option we do have for everyone out there that doesn't want to run additional cameras, but wants to run just the factory turn on switch, you can actually get this harness. This is called our camera activation harness or a camera on harness. It is a trimmed down version where you don't get the multi cameras, but you just get the factory reverse camera turn on option. It plugs in the back exactly the same way, but it only has the one plug and we have a single button only, not a dual button, and it will just do the camera on. Very easy as well. I'm quickly gonna show you how to put all this back in. So the first step is ensure that you do plug in this airbag light if you do have it. Slot the panels straight back in. You're then gonna do the four bolts, which I'm quickly gonna do off camera. And then I'm gonna show you an important part of returning it and how to get this section of the dash back in. The screws back in, you're just gonna put the aircon back in again. You're just gonna hold this panel forward and just slot it in and there's actually, it's gonna clip in, nice and easy. And there we go. Oh, you should actually hear it click. There we go. Is that in? There we go. Just make sure it's clipped in properly and then you'll have no problems. The next step is we're gonna put the top trim section back in. You're gonna pull the Speedo cluster forward, slide it in and go along. Oh, we are going to put the glove box in first as well, so I'll quickly grab that. With the glove box, make sure it's actually open before you slot it back in because it will slide in easier and it just pushes in. There we go. Shut it. Finish up the top trim. And there we go. It's almost like a boy. Once you actually have the top trim in, this is probably the hardest part of returning the dash. You just need to make sure these little corner tabs slot in the holes that they actually have to go into so it sits nice and neat so you want to pull it forward and across to the passenger side and clip it in now you'll know when you've got it because it'll actually sit in neatly there we go that's all clipped in nice and neat and the other section you want to just make sure is in properly is this top section there we go you heard that click you just want to make sure the top section here is not covering any of your speedometer just to make sure it's sitting nice and neat. Again, you gotta put the scrivets in and the best way to do that is take the center piece, push it up into the, the hole. Takes a little bit of fiddly, there we go. And then you gotta take the center screw and slot that up in. And we're done.